The Jeep Grand Cherokee for about 25 years has stuck to its true roots of being a true midsize SUV. With it being an SUV that lives up to the Jeep name of having superior off-road prowess, it also makes for a comfortable everyday family vehicle in the suburbs. So is the Jeep Grand Cherokee a worthy choice in a sea of midsize SUVs and crossovers? Well, let's go ahead and check out and take a closer look at this 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now this Grand Cherokee generation has been out for quite some time since the 2011 model year. In 2014, Jeep updated the Grand Cherokee and brought a pretty extensive refresh that brought new headlights, taillights, and then they also updated the interior quite a bit too. Now for 2017, not much has changed, but there are a couple of updates here that are pretty noteworthy. First off, you do have a slightly revised front fascia, especially you can see that with the headlights. The headlights are a little bit slimmer this time around. And then also, Jeep is introducing a new Trailhawk model, and then supposedly there's also the Trackhawk model too, which is kind of like the equivalent of the Dodge Hellcat. Now also the Trailhawk model is aimed at off-road enthusiasts. It features standard skip plates and then of course you have the quadra lift, air suspension, and then you have a rear electronic limited slip differential too. Now on the Summit trim you do get a full-on Laguna leather interior which is new for 2017 and then also for 2017 the Summit model gets new LED daytime running lights which do look quite nice and then they also kind of look like a Range Rover to be honest and then you also do have um, a revised front grille too but of course you have classic Jeep styling traits here with the seven bar slot grille design and our trim of the Grand Cherokee we have here is the limited trim and it's pretty loaded inside it has some nice features now it's not the top of the line model but it's a nicely equipped one and then I also do love these 18 inch gray alloy wheels we do get here pretty nice looking now here goes the key fob design for the Grand Cherokee decent looking key fob you have your unlock your lock your power tailgate your remote engine start and then your panic alarm now this is the true blue pearl exterior color you also do have smart key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door and you do have chrome exterior door handles now when you step up to the limited trim you do get a full-on leather interior then you have some nice contrast stitching too. power driver seat with power recline and power lumbar All right, now stepping on inside of the Grand Cherokee here, it has a very luxurious interior design. In fact, when you step up to the summit and the overland trim of the Grand Cherokee, it can go head on with some luxury car models such as from Mercedes-Benz and BMW. This is a really exquisite looking interior. Um, a lot of the materials do feel rich, especially the wood. It looks real and it feels real. And then also it's nice and soft touch up here too. You can get a leather stitch dash, which is nice. Overall, not a bad looking interior. And then I also do love how it has a upright design. Now you do have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start, of course. And what you're hearing there is a 3.6 liter V6. You have a full leather wrapped steering wheel. Now Jeep actually updated the shifter in the 2016 model year. They went back to a traditional kind of shifter here. But it is an 8 speed automatic. You also do have manual shiftability and paddle shifters. When you put the vehicle into reverse, this will display your rear view camera with guidance lines and trajectory. You can also get an automatic parking feature for perpendicular parking and parallel parking. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights and you also do have your fogs as well as the hazards. 
Driver's window and the front passenger window are fully automatic. Let's go ahead and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Check out the exterior of the vehicle. Heated exterior mirrors. You can get blind spot detection and you do have LED turn signal indicators. Now, despite the Grand Cherokee being more of a rugged type of SUV, it actually is based on a unibody platform like many other crossovers in this class. All right, now powering the Grand Cherokee here is a 3.6 liter V6. Now, Chrysler Jeep Dodge likes to use this engine in a lot of their vehicles. It's the Pentastar engine, and it produces 290 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 260 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM, with EPA estimates being an 18 in the city and 25 on the highway with our four-wheel drive model. Now, if you're looking for better fuel efficiency numbers, then you'll want to go with the diesel V6 engine, and that gets significantly better fuel efficiency. And then if you're looking for better towing capabilities and then better power, go with the Hemi V8, the 5.7 liter V8. It produces lots of power <laughs> for the Grand Cherokee. But this 3.6 liter V6 should satisfy most consumers. And if you go for the real wheel drive model, you're looking at EPA estimates of 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. Plus. The only vehicle in this class that is based off of a truck is the Toyota 4Runner. But the Jeep Grand Cherokee sticks to its true roots of being a rugged type of midsize SUV. While many vehicles in this class have gone softer, like the Ford Explorer and the Nissan Pathfinder, you have halogen projector beam headlights. You can get LED daytime running lights as well as xenon headlights. And then you do have halogen projector fogs. All right, now powering the Grand Cherokee here is a 3.6 liter V6. Now, Chrysler Jeep Dodge likes to use this engine in a lot of their vehicles. It's the Pentastar engine and it produces 290 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 260 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM, with EPA estimates being an 18 in the city and 25 on the highway with our four-wheel drive model. Now, if you're looking for better fuel efficiency numbers, then you'll want to go with the diesel V6 engine, and that gets significantly better fuel efficiency. And then if you're looking for better towing capabilities and then better power, go with the Hemi V8, the 5.7 liter V8. It produces lots of power <laughs> for the Grand Cherokee. But this 3.6 liter V6 should satisfy most consumers. And if you go for the real wheel drive model, you're looking at EPA estimates of 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. Now, competitors of the Grand Cherokee, you're looking at vehicles in the midsize crossover and SUV class. Probably its closest competitor to being off-road worthy is the Toyota 4Runner. However, its interior is nowhere near as luxurious as the Grand Cherokee's. You can also look at the GMC Acadia, as well as the Chevrolet Equinox, maybe, and then the Ford Explorer. However, some of these vehicles do offer third row seats. The Grand Cherokee does not offer that. If you're looking for a third row seating option, then you'll want to step up to its cousin, the Dodge Durango. Now, the Grand Cherokee can also be compared to some luxury mid-size crossover SUVs like the Mercedes-Benz GLE and maybe the BMW X5. Depending on what trim you get of the Grand Cherokee, if you're looking at the top of the line trims, then you'll want to compare this vehicle to those vehicles. Now, when you step up to higher end trim levels of the Grand Cherokee, it gets rid of this plastic body cladding, if you're not a big fan of that. Total vehicle price for our particular one is $41,685. And this is a 2017 model, not a 2016, as you can see right here. And then EPA estimates, like I said, are 18 city, 25 highway. And then here goes the government five-star safety ratings. Overall vehicle score is a five, pretty good. Final assembly point is in Detroit, Michigan. Then you also do have roof rails on the top right here. You can get crossbars as an accessory. Coming to the rear of the vehicle, you have LED illuminated taillights rear parking sensors, rear reflectors, and a chrome exhaust tip, rear window wiper with a rear window defroster.
Of course you have all of your basic power necessities, power windows, mirrors, door locks, chrome interior door handles, memory seat settings for two people on the side right here. Love the stitching going on here, gives it a nice contrast. Now the interior of the Grand Cherokee is pretty roomy and it's pretty comfortable too. Interior quality is pretty good. You have nice soft touch materials on the upper door panel, mid door panel, and on the armrest. The uh, center console lid is also nice soft touch and then you do have nice stitching as well. And then up here the dashboard is also nice and softly padded too. And nothing really creaks inside of here. Overall, the build quality is pretty good. Um, Many of the trim and pieces fit well together, so that's nice. Coming to the steering wheel design, I noticed that the steering wheel, they made the steering wheel rim a little bit thinner, and I guess some people weren't a big fan of the pretty thick steering wheel rims. But over here we do have your controls for the TFT instrument cluster, which I'll get to in just a minute. You also do have your voice recognition and your Bluetooth phone controls. Your steering wheel mounted audio controls are actually located on the back of the steering wheel. And then over here you do have your uh, cruise control too. The steering wheel also does manually tilt and telescope. Up here you also do have an auto dimming rear view mirror with roadside assistance, map lights, sunglass container, and your garage home link. You can get a full-on panoramic sunroof if you would like that extends all the way to the back or you can just get a regular sunroof if you would like. Down here, you have a little storage cubby that you will find a 12 volt power outlet in and then you have a USB port, auxiliary input, and an SD card slot. Dual cup holders and then you have your select terrain management for your four-wheel drive system you have your downhill descent control and then you also do have your automatic mode sand mode snow mode mud over here and then rock too and then you can also get the air suspension if you would like to get a little bit more ground clearance for the jeep and then you have your center console see some amount of space in the center console then you also do have this little light right here too which illuminates it at night. Down here you will find your parking sensors off button, your automatic start sy stop system for your engine, and when you come to a complete stop, the vehicle will actually shut off to save a little bit of fuel. Then you have your eco off button, your sport mode on, and then your traction control off. Shows you right there too. Now one of my favorite features of the Grand Cherokee is the standard TFT instrument cluster that you will find on all Grand Cherokees. Now it's a pretty good looking display and it's pretty useful too, I'll show you in just a minute. On the left you have your tachometer for the gauges and then your coolant temperature and then your fuel gauge. Now to control that information center on that TFT instrument cluster you control it by um, these set of buttons right here on the steering wheel. And Right here you do have your digital speedometer or you can switch to an analog gauge. It's all digital here. Then you have your setup for your screen. You can control the gear display, the, your favorite menus. And then you also do have your exterior temperature readout and your direction of travel. Right here you have any stored messages. And then you have your audio, it shows you what radio station is playing or what song is playing. You could change your different audio source from here too. Then it shows you if your automatic start stop system is on or off. Then you have your trip information. And then your fuel economy, like your fuel range, average fuel economy. And then your current MPG, all that good stuff. And then you have your terrain management for your four-wheel drive system too, your select terrain. Shows you the drivetrain. Then you have your vehicle. Shows, shows you like the oil temperature. Lots of vehicle information here. Then the oil pressure, oil life percentage, battery voltage, tire pressure, transmission temperature, lots of stuff here. Overall, really do love this gauge cluster of the Jeep. One of my favorite features. Coming to the infotainment system and the main head unit, this is the 8.4 inch system from Jeep and it's the Uconnect system and I really do love this head unit here. It's very user friendly. It's one of the top rated infotainment systems in the business because it's 
very intuitive and easy to use. Now coming to your different audio sources, you have all of the norm here, AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite, radio. You also find your USB port with iPod integration, auxiliary input, and your SD card slot. You have your controls, you have your heated steering wheel, heated seats, and then backup camera too. You can just display that anytime you would like, which is pretty nice. And then you also do have your presets that are located up here. You have your iTunes tagging. You can favorite it if you would like. Then you have your new Uconnect apps, which shows you your AHA, Internet Radio, iHeart, off-road pages, roadside assistance. You have your app manager and your app setup. Now this head unit right here is actually optional. It's not standard on all Grand Cherokees. You'll get a much smaller head unit if you go for a more basic trim level of the Grand Cherokee here. You also do have your Pandora, your Wi-Fi hotspot, Yelp, Slacker, all that good stuff. Then you have your climate. You can control your climate functions from here. Or you can do it down here with your fan speeds for the center dial and then your temperatures. You also do have dual zone automatic climate control. And then you have your different zones right here as well. And then you have your screen off button right there your phone you can hook up your Bluetooth phone have all of your contacts start on here and then view your recent calls you have your phone book and then your text messaging too overall love the Uconnect touchscreen it's very intuitive very responsive to one of the best infotainment systems in the business now with me being a personal owner of a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the same exact powertrain with the 3.6 liter V6 and the 8 speed automatic, I'm actually very familiar of the way this vehicle drives. And one thing I really do love about the Grand Cherokee is that it offers a smooth and comfortable ride yet it still has more of a rugged type nature. And that's thanks to it not being based off of a truck like the Toyota 4Runner and it's based off of a car instead. But the Grand Cherokee is very quiet inside and it offers a buttery smooth ride and it's very compliant and soaks up road bumps very well. The 3.6 liter V6 certainly should satisfy most consumers there's really no need for more power here, but if you're looking for extra towing capabilities, then go for that V8 engine with the Hemi V8, the 5.7 liter one. And if you're looking for better fuel efficiency, go for that eco diesel engine too. The eco diesel is like, is what Jeep likes to call it. But overall, driving the Grand Cherokee is a very pleasant experience. It's very refined too. And the eight speed automatic, it can hesitate to shift at times, but Overall, it's a pretty refined powertrain, much better than the nine-speed automatic that they put in the Jeep Cherokees and the Chrysler 200s. And the handling on this vehicle is actually pretty good too. It's not as clumsy as, say, as the Toyota 4Runner, and you can feel for where this vehicle is trying to go. Overall, driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee is a really pleasant and joyful experience. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut down. The Jeep. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Interior quality in the Grand Cherokee is pretty good back here. It still follows through in the rear. And then you do have second row reclining seats back here. And the headrests are all adjustable, even the middle seat. But like I said, if you're looking for third row seats, you won't find that in the Jeep here. You either, you'll probably have to wait for the rumored Grand Wagoneer that's supposed to come out in the near future or go to the Dodge Durango. Now you do have dual mat pockets back here, rear air vents, heated rear seats that are two-staged, and then you also do have two USB charging ports when you step up to the limited trim, and then you also do have a house outlet. Won't have a problem charging a device back here. You also do have rear cup holders with a rear center armrest. The seats are also pretty comfortable back here too. You have your map lights right here. All right. Power tailgate. You have a cargo cover and the rear seats do fold down to maximize cargo space, 60-40 split. And then down here you also find your spare tire. Then you have a flashlight right here too.
powered passenger seat with power recline and power lumbar. Glove box compartment. So the Jeep Grand Cherokee is easily one of the best mid-size SUVs you could buy. With its superior off-road prowess, its excellent refinement, its luxurious interior, and its wide array of powertrains, no wonder why many people flock to this mid-size SUV. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.